Welcome back to the Crochet Crowd as well as my friends over at Yarnspirations.com. I'm your host Mikey. Today is a small fry crochet sleep sack and this is a free pattern available by Yarnspirations.com. This is actually really super easy to make and I think you'll be very surprised on how fast you'll be able to make it as well. So it's almost a misconception on how big this thing is because it's actually quite tiny and when you compare it to the other snuggle sacks that are available in the series this one is a miniature in comparison for sure. So let's talk a little bit about this photo because I don't want you to be misled by what you're looking at. So in the photo you'll notice that there is six fries. One, two, three, four, five, and six. That's all that ball of yarn can handle. So as far as this yellow that you see. Now the extra three fries that you see as a photo prop have to be done with a separate ball of yarn. So when we're asking for you to do a ball this is a small fry so this is one that's on the outside just like you see. Now these are two layers that are sandwiched together and crocheted around so there's not a lot of sewing involved with that particular piece and they're just laid inside and then they're just sewn to the back of this particular um, sack that you see to give the look that you have. And so it really provides a little bit of cushion for the baby's head as well. And when you're looking at this particular picture you see how it goes in and you see how it lifts up here. The fries don't go all the way down into the package. So this one here is the small fry and then you have a larger fry that you see here. So they just kind of work together. So these fries are super super easy to make. This is super easy to make. Everything's super easy to make and let's begin. So you'll need an eight millimeter size L crochet hook today and you're going to need two uh, particular colors. You'll need the br uh, bright uh, br uh, Bernat Blanket Brights. Race Car Red is in two balls and then School Bus Yellow for one ball and again if you want to make more fries just grab another ball of School Bus Yellow in order to complete. So let's talk about the front and the backs of the box itself. So when you're looking at the box of fries they're both the same to a certain degree to about this level here and then from here up is each unique to itself. What I recommend to you is that do both of these boxes up into this point and then just start and finish both of these boxes at the same time. So you're going to notice that the front box here decreases down and then comes back up and the other box on the back side just stays completely solid so it doesn't come down like that. So what you're going to have to do is get yourself to do a repeat pattern. So we're going to start off and you're going to start off with so many stitches and what I would do if you were me and I were you is that you would just do a little chart like this and this here is the number of rounds. So you're gonna do one or uh, the number of rows. So two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight and then you repeat it again and come to the next one. So once you click off one, so if you do uh, row number two, click it that you did it and just check it off and then do number three, four, five. Now eight is an increase so that the box actually comes out on an angle. So every time you get to eight you increase here and then you come back up and continue along. So you're gonna do both the front and the back boxes like that to a certain degree and then we're gonna then carry up and finish each of the front and the back. So enough chitter chatter. Let's get at her. Let's begin to show you how to do the box. So there's two sizes of crochet hooks that are being used today. You're gonna need a six and a half millimeter size K crochet hook. That's, those are for the fries and then for the box is an eight millimeter size L crochet hook. So use the bigger hook for the box. You're going to create a slip knot and it says to chain a total of 29. I'm not gonna do that with you on camera because um, you literally can do this really quite easily. So you're going to just chain 29 and then once you have your satisfied distance so you get your 29. You're just gonna go back and forth and just do single crochets back and forth. So second chain from the hook you're just going to pick up the, um, the chain. So just go in the back hump of the chain only and you're just gonna crochet yourself across. So this is row number one. You'll never be repeating row number one. That's why the instructions in my sheet that I had shows you to repeat rows number two through eight for a set number of times which I'll show you in just a moment. So you come right to the very end and go right into that very final stitch and then you start the repeat pattern. Always that first one is a little bit tricky. Not gonna let it stop me because I love this pattern. So once you get all the way to the end turn your work. So rows number two through seven are just simply sim uh, single crochets. So you chain up one and one single crochet in each going all the way across. So you're gonna do rows one through seven like that and then on row number eight is an increase row. 
so that all you're just going to do is add an extra stitch to the front side and the back side as far as like the, the beginning and the ending of the rows. So you're going to do your rows like this. Once you get to row number eight, you chain up one and you put two single crochets in the first. So one and two and just simply just single crochet yourself all the way across. So one and I'm not counting. I'm just going all the way across. That's the nice thing about this pattern. You can do it in front of the TV without any issues. And on the very final stitch you're just gonna add two. So that was row number eight. So you just do now one through seven again. So it's one single crochet in each and then you'll hit eight again and then you'll do an increase and so you get the nice box shape going like this. So let's grab our sheet. So what I had for you to do is that you're just gonna check them off. So row, or rows number one through seven is just a regular single crochet and the eighth row is an increase. And then just check it off on your boxes as you go. For myself I just for transparency I write on my patterns so I did it here. So don't think that I don't do that kind of thing. And so you're just gonna check it off and then move to the next one. So up, up, up and then when you get to the increase, increase it again and you're gonna do it so it has a total of five times. So the very first time that you run through it says repeat four more times. This is number one and then these are the other four times so that you end up with five sections just like that. So I'm going to leave that with you. Let me show you what your uh, boxes look like and then we're gonna pick up and we're gonna continue then in the tutorial to build the final tops of the boxes. So once you get your repeat pattern, so you've done it five times for repeats, you're gonna get to the very top and you're going to do the back one the same way so that they're both ready to go. And so I did fasten off at this particular point so I'm just going to refasten back on and continue. And I like to do stuff like that so it keeps me organized like an assembly line. So what we're going to do next is that we're going to do the front of the box at first and then we're gonna come back and do the back of the box just like you see here. So let's get rid of the back of the box for now and let's grab our yarn and let's now do the, the front and so it's going to be the front right top. So this is my right hand here so we're going to continue then. This is where we left off so we're gonna start back there again and start doing our box shaping right here. So let's start the top right of the front of the box and I'm just gonna create a slip knot to begin and I'm going to rejoin. So technically you wouldn't be rejoining if you were continuing on but I like to do my front and back panels at the same time. So I'm just going to join it on with the slip knot and I'm gonna chain one and we're simply just going to single crochet into the same one that I just did the join with. So just going in there and that is gonna be considered one of 14. So I'm going to come to the next stitch and I'm gonna say two and three, four. Notice then that I'm burying that other one as I go. This is five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, and fourteen. So as soon as I get fourteen I'm done and all I'm just going to do then is that I'm going to turn my work. So now I'm just gonna turn and go back in the other direction. So it says the next row is single crochet two together. So we're just going to chain one and put the first two together. So in, pull through and go to the next one, pull through and then pull through two together. And then we're going to just single crochet the remaining all the way back. So there's technically 13 stitches now because I've eliminated one because there was 14. So your goal is to continue to go back and forth like this until you get to only seven stitches left on the top and then that's when you know you're done. So it says continue repeating the instruction until seven remain. Okay, so you turn your work and you continue along. So you don't actually do a decrease right at the very, oh yes you do. So you do a decrease right at the very end. So chain up one and one single crochet in each and then the final two is gonna become two together. So you notice I'm not counting, I'm just looking for the visual cues. You can count if you wish. I wash my hook and my hook is sliding out of the sleeve. 
some reason this hook gets really dirty. So we're gonna just put the final two together. So in and in and then put those together and then turn your work and then put the first two together again. So just in and in, pull through and then you can just do the remaining. So you're just gonna go back and forth like that. Just make sure that you're reducing when you hit the side and you wanna do it until seven stitches remain on the top. So please do that now. I'll see you at the end of that. So I'm just finishing up across. I know I have seven left. I've been counting as I've been going and then that's it. And so once I get this done I'm just going to fasten off and then I'm just gonna weave in my ends and then I'm going to start with the other side. Noticing that I told you that we were on the right hand side so don't get confused on where you are right now. You are technically on the right so you're looking at the back of the, the box right now. So just taking the yarn. My hook is still sliding out of my sleeve. That's what happens when you put dish soap in your hook to get rid of the grease from your hands. It just makes the <laughs> steel look like it's uh, lubing up. Okay, so we're going to then turn it back to the right hand side again and now we're going to continue with the left. So this is what it looks like. So it's not quite done. We're gonna come back afterward uh, once the box is assembled and we're gonna do a reverse single crochet to smooth and all that off. So let's continue then and let's go to the other side for the left hand side. Now the instructions say to skip 10 and then start and then you're going to do the, 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 the left very similar. I like to do it backwards. I like to go from the other side. So we know that there was 14 stitches here. So I'm gonna count back 14. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, and 14. The reason why I do that is that sometimes if you're not following the pattern exactly then what can happen is that one of these could be off by a little bit and even one stitch actually makes a difference. You'll be surprised. You're going to join it with a slip knot and then chain one. Okay and what you're going to do then is that we are going to single crochet into the same one and then continue to single crochet going across. So every time you end up back on the middle of the box you're going to do that decreasing of the single crochet two together. Noticing that I went right up over top of that strand so that I can hide it in later. So you're just gonna go back and forth till seven stitches remain back on the top like you did before. It's just we have to start differently. Why did we have to start this way? Is because the stitch work knows that you were in this direction to keep it consistent. So if you started from the back side and did this you'll notice that it won't look consistent. So turning your work, row number two, we're going to decrease when we get to the uh, end of that. So just one single crochet in each except for the final two we're gonna bring those together. And I want you to continue to do this. You already kinda know it now and just go all the way across and bring those final two together and when you start the next row up you're gonna start off with putting the two together like you did before and you're good to go. So put the final two together, turn your work, chain one first and then put the front two together and then continue along. So please do that all the way and uh, so they get seven remaining at the top and then join me at the end of that. So now that I'm at the end of there I have seven remaining. I'm now going to fasten this off and just weave in my ends. What I want to do is that I wanna make sure that I'm keeping an eye on what is the front and what is the back. So right now I'm looking at the back of the project because technically this is the left hand side. So you may wanna mark this with an actual um, um, with an actual um, stitch marker so that you can see um, what is the front and what's the back. So just grabbing a spare piece of yarn and just a smaller hook and I'm just going to mark it that this is the back. Because what you're going to need to do is put the front and the back of the box together. So we'll just leave that there. So this is good to go and this is the front of the box that you're going to look at now and then let's move on to the back of the box and let's finish that. So as we begin the back of the box I want you to write down one through eight and then shape one through eleven. So what we're going to do is we're gonna build up the box another eight rows of single crochets back and forth and then you're just gonna check that off as you go and then we're gonna start shaping the box where it's gonna start rounding off at the top of the box that you don't see behind the fries to give those fries something to hang on to in the back. So we're going to then just check this off and we're gonna continue now and you're going to start up your 
on the where you left off. I did fasten off so I'm gonna refasten back on and do eight more rows of single crochet. So let's begin. You're just going to join with a slip stitch Okay, and chain one and single crochet in the same one. And I want you to go back and forth with single crochet which you already know how to do at this point and just do eight rows of that. Check it off your list. Make sure that you have it done right and then we're gonna start shaping. So eight rows of single crochet back and forth please. Okay, so now I have my eight rows complete just like you see right up here and now this matches the, the front. So what I'm about to do now is going to curve up. Let me get this in. It's gonna curve up and come around. So what we want to do for the next 11 rows is that we wanna do it like it was the top of that box but we're gonna do it both sides. We're not just gonna keep it flat on one side. So chain up one and the first two are gonna become two together for single crochet and you're going to single crochet yourself all the way across and then the final two will be single crochet uh, two together as well. And then you're going to start the next row up and it's single crochet two together right off the bat and then finish with single crochet two together and you're gonna do a total of 11 rows like that and that will have that curve off. And then what we need to do at that point is that we need to sew the front and the back together to create the box and then we're going to then um, just do a final round around the top to make it look like it all belongs together as one box. So continue now and don't forget to single crochet two together on this side. Turn your work single crochet together, single crochet across, single crochet two together and keep on doing for a total of 11 rows. So you'll be getting faster and faster as you decrease stitches. So I'm coming up to the end of row number 11 and that's it. So I'm just going to fasten this off now and we are now going to put the front and the back together. So we have to determine what is the back side of this project and what is the front side. How are you gonna be able to tell that? You can tell it by the direction of the bottom of where you started. So when you crocheted, you started here and you went across and back. So this here is the right side of the project. So what I want to do is that I wanna turn it over and now this is the back side of the project and now we wanna grab the front side and put it together with this. So let's uh, do that next. So I marked the back side of this here if you remember with the stitch marker so I know that this is the back and what I want to do is align up the base of this and it won't go all the way to the top because we were rounding off at the top. So what I want to do is that I want to put in a stitch marker so I'm just gonna see, see how it just starts here. So this is where the box joins right here. And so what I'm going to do is using the same color is that we are going to whip stitch all the way around this and let me show you how to do that next. So you have a couple options at this point. It says to sew the edges together. Here's a tip. I'm probably gonna get in trouble but I'm just gonna tell you anyway. I think that you can actually um, single crochet this together instead. The reason for it is that because you've used single crochet they match with each other. So I'm going to take the easy way in not actually sew these together but what I want to do is I want to start on the same row before it goes in like this and then when I come back around I want to finish there as well. So I'm just gonna come through the one side and I'm gonna go to, to the other and you're gonna join both at the same time. So just join it with a slip stitch or yep slip stitch. Pull it nice and tight. Chain one and you want to single crochet yourself together. This hook is driving me crazy just so you know. So you're just going to whip stitch yourself together. Getting started is always kind of a pain. I want you to leave down that straggler though so that it catches. So move to the next available. So all these stitches line up with each other and just go across and grab both and put them together. So you could sew them I know a lot of you are gonna use your own creative exercise and putting these together. My hook is not helping me at all. I think I need to go find a different one here. So I'm just going to uh, single crochet and match all the way down. I wanna keep an eye for the base to make sure that I'm not advancing too much on the one side. Uh, I'd like one of these going a little bit too quicker than the other but uh, what I want to do is just make sure that they line up perfectly and I think you'll end up with a really nice edge if you single crochet those together. So use your creative exercise if you prefer to sew then sew. If you prefer to do the single crochet joining method again that's up to you and what you think is best for your lifestyle. 
When you get to a corner just make sure that because you are single crocheting you're putting three into the same one and then because you're working along the base I had you doing um, the on the back loop of the stitches so the stitch count should be exactly identical so you will find that the stitch work will line up completely on the bottom side. So then when you get to the next corner just single three single crochets and work back up the other side and you can see that it's joining a lot across really quite nicely. So please do that all the way for the remaining of this one. So I've now come all the way back around I'm on the final stitch that I just finished and what I want to do is that I want to start weaving in some loose ends here and let's get rid of some of these tails that we have been working with the whole time. So what we just need to do is grab a darning needle so the magic number is three. So if you drag a, a strand through your project three times it gets pretty much hidden and then you don't have to ever worry about it especially if a child's using it. So just drag it through just stay in the stitch work on the underside here and coming through this is nice fluffy yarn so when you go to pull on it don't warp it. Go through a different path in the other direction for number two and third time is a charm so go back yeah, third time in and I want you to do that with any loose tails that you have on this project. But now it's time to finish off the top of the box of this thing and you'll notice that I never weaved in these or the other one because I'm just going to go over it with the reverse single crochet. So what we're going to do is we're gonna clean up this edge and we're going to circle around. So around here and then back up and over. We're gonna do that as a reverse single crochet. So how we do that is that we're going to start off right where we finished off and we want to just follow it backwards around. What do I mean by that? Watch. So this is a reverse single crochet. So start in the very first one and let's just join it with the slip knot or the slip stitch sorry. You're gonna chain up one and in the same one just reverse single crochet. So pull through and then pull through everything. So now you're going to go to the one before the hook. So not advancing this way but before. So you go in scoop the yarn pull through you have two loops on the hook. I know you, that you can't see that but pull through both of those loops and that's a reverse single crochet. Always getting started with reverse single crochet is kind of a little bit tricky but once you understand it it's good. So go to the one before scoop pull through there's two loops now left on the hook pull through both of those. So the one before scoop and what you're going to do is you're gonna follow this path all the way down come down back up across through the top and then back ar completely around to make it look like it's all seamless. So just follow this uh, going down like this is technically not a stitch anymore but it's like you were single crocheting around the outside. It's kind of what clued me into single crochet the edging together instead of sewing it because you can get away with it really quite easily because it is single crochet. So please do a th reverse single crochet all the way around. I'll see you at the end of this round. So I'm just coming back around just with the reverse single crochet back to where it started and I wanna stop exactly where I started. So just coming in and pulling it through and then all I'm just going to do is I'm going to use a darning needle, tapestry needle. I don't know why I keep calling it a darning needle. <laughs> I've been really noticing that this week in tutorial making. So I just wanted to take my tapestry needle and pull it through. So I want to just go in the direction that I had started with because then that'll pull that last stitch in together to make it look like it belongs. See? So now you're gonna come back in the other direction second time and three times is a charm so make sure you go back a third time and continue to weave in any other loose ends that you may have run into along the way. So what's missing in the box? Obviously some fries. So we're gonna be moving on to the fries next and uh, the fries are actually really quite simple. Um, you can put on the TV and enjoy and make your set of fries and uh, <laughs> you can have a lot of fun with those. Now I originally thought when I looked at the fries that they were stuffed but they're not. They're actually two layers of the same panel that are put together to give it the volume and it actually provides some padding for the child's head as well. So get rid of all your loose ends and let's begin to make um, the fries next. So we're gonna make the fries. There are a total of three different sizes. We have the X, they have the large fries, we have the medium fries 
there's two of each, each and then the small fries. So the small one I'm going to show you that one on camera. So once you get your fries done then all you're just going to do is position them into your box and now you want them to come down so that they just kind of peek out the top of the box a little bit like that and when you sew them you want them to be straight up. So they're each individual and you're gonna make room in your box to fit all of these here. If they overlap a little bit no big deal. Um, you can handle that and actually kind of having your fries kind of scattered too is not a bad idea. But you wanna be conscientious where the child is gonna lay their head as well and so then you put your small fries on the end just like that. So you can actually have some fun on how they're falling out of your box. So let's show you how to do your fries next and then once we get the fries done then we're gonna sew them to the box permanently and you can feel that it's really awesome. So your fries are made up of two panels just like you see. So there is a small fry, a large fry, and a medium fries. <laughs> Talk about the incorrect order right? So what we have is that they're each a different chain length but they're each the same instruction. So the small fry is chaining 27, the medium is 31, and the large is 37 and it gives you a different uh, piece. So each fry has two pa uh, panels that are put together to give it the volume that you would want for your fries. So in order to do that you're going to chain up the mount that you want and then you're going to do a half double crochet third chain from the hook and go all the way across. Chain up two doesn't count as anything and half double crochet back. Chain up two half double crochet back and then you're done. So you're gonna do two panels like that. Once you've done your second one of the same size what you're going to do then is put the panels together and you're going to single crochet them around together. So just going into the same one that you have and then into the other one and you're going to single crochet and in the corners you're gonna single crochet three so that it does the right turn. So you just work your way down and just evenly space your fries or like you're edging around the fry as we go and then you're gonna hit another edge. So you can, you don't hear me counting because I'm not, I'm just looking at the project. So you're gonna put three here, single crochets and then once you have this, these long edges, they line up to each other, the stitch work. So put any loose ends on the inside of the fry, therefore they'll be gone permanently out of your sight and out of mind and just start on the front side here and jump to the back side for a stitch and just single crochet yourself all the way across. So in the corners don't forget to three single crochets. Keep an eye to make sure that they are the same length and you might have to adjust just in case you did something wrong if they're not exactly the same size. But if you have to adjust just a matter of just being strategic with your hook I wouldn't frog anything in order to make that happen. So just please single crochet all the way around each one of your fries. There's a total of six of them and then we're going to sew to the project. So please do all six now. You'll find that this will go pretty fast and easy. When you get all the way back around you're just going to slip stitch to the first one just so you know I'm gonna, I have a note on screen anyway. You should have been using your six and a half millimeter size K crochet hook for your fries. I forgot to mention that to you and I forgot to do that as well. Um, you will run out of yarn not to be able to do all your fries if you use this size hook for all of them. So just so you know. So let's uh, just get this going and now we have to position and set ourselves up to sew the fries to the box. Now you don't have to be too careful about like how, how many times you gotta sew it to the box. The idea is that it's just in position so that it will not fall out but it's sturdy enough that um, it'll work as well. So just, just uh, get rid of all your loose ends at this time and let's go back to the box and let's position and just secure it in. So as we begin I want you to make with the red yarn 12 stitch markers that you're going to use to hold things in. So this is number three. So now what we're going to do is that we're now gonna position the fries in the box. So start with your big fries in the, in the, the middle. Okay you want it to come up just a little bit slightly. Just kind of watch exactly where it goes down in here. I'm going to go down so that six what appears to be six rows is where it is. So I'm going to grab the next large fry and put it right beside it. If it's a little off like as far as like making one a little bit taller than the other, no big deal. Um, it's kind of like the neat idea. So now you got your large fry in there. Let's do your medium fries. Okay. In and medium. 
So they're slightly t uh, smaller at the top and then we're going to do your small fries right at the end. So if you want it to be kind of hairy canary you can do that and then I am just going to get the large last small fry. So what I want to do is that I want to secure these now into position. So to do that all I'm just going to do is that I'm going to take one strand and I'm going to take a smaller crochet hook that's off camera here and I'm going to come from behind just up straight through the back and I'm going to grab the one yarn and pull through and my goal is is that it just kind of holds it into position so I know where it is. Okay and I'm gonna do that for each one of these. So I'm gonna do one just slightly up on it as well. So just coming straight up. It's better to have this marked now than it would be to wait a little bit later. So it's just in there just kind of holding it and then do these all the way across just like that. So do that and I'll see you at the end of this one. So now that I have them all marked in I want to very carefully turn this upside down and all of these should be popping out the back. And what I want to do is that I want to use this red yarn or the thread that we're gonna use and what I want to do is dive in and just grab a section of the fry and just continue to go. So if you do it right you will not see any of this yarn actually popping out at all in the back side. So let's uh, continue now and let's just get our yarn strand. So I'm just gonna see what how much I need. This yarn is exceptionally easy to hide. So I'm creating a slip knot on the one side and the other side goes to the tapestry needle. So I can see that this is where the first one is. So what I want to do is just kind of pinch it and coming in and just grab the fry. If this yarn goes out towards the top of the fry on the other side then I know I'm too deep. So I'm just gonna continue to go just grab a piece of the fry and just pull it until you get to that tapestry needle or until you get to that loop and then come back through a slightly different path and put that loop on and tighten everything into position. Pull it nice and snug. So now you're just gonna work your way across. So you're just gonna dive in and grab another section of that fry. Just peel it back a little bit and then come back out through the back of the box. That's that starting strand and then back. So what I want you to do is just follow up the edge just like you have so all these fries are in a position and maybe back here in just a moment. Okay once you get all the way across everything should be attached on the top which it is. Fasten in and get rid of your loose ends. Get rid of that tail that you started with as well that was around that slip knot that you had began and just because it's already knotted in it's not gonna follow but you just wanna drag it through some stitch work just to kinda get rid of that loose tail from being able to follow it on you. So now what you want to do is that just turn it over give it a quick examination and now the fries are in there. So now I still have the base of the fries to go so you'll notice that uh, um, it looks pretty awesome and I'm pretty excited about it. So I'm going to now continue and we're going to work then on securing the base of this area. So let's flip it back over and so carefully now because you can't peel back that top edge you wanna go across the base just kinda looping in and catching the fries then along the bottom using the red. So please do that next and then that's it for this project. So I've just now come across there. See how well this yarn hides? It's really quite awesome and I'm just gonna weave in the last um, tail that we have and because it's the slip knot that we started with you can hide that in really quite nicely. So now that's it. Your fry, small fry is done. So we can just flip it over. So it's been secured now on the front and the back. So you can just get rid of, get rid of this out. That is that one that I secured and I think I sewed it into position. So if that happens to you you can just safely just get rid of it. Just pull it as hard as you can. 
<laughs> and it will sink behind. And if anybody sees it, just say it's ketchup on the fries. So um, any loose ends that you have, just pull them out and uh, everything is good to go. So this is the small fries and I'm really quite excited to hang this in my studio. I'm really, really super excited and I think this is awesome. So if you would like to make any more extra, just buy some extra yarn and, and if anything is not sitting right, just use the, um, the yellow yarn and just kind of tack it in but everything is good to go. So until next time, it's Mikey on behalf of the Crochet Crowd. This is a small fry crochet sleep sack available at yarnspirations.com. We'll see you again real soon. Bye-bye.